Today I'm ready for some outdoor action. I'm going to be sailing along the beautiful coastline of Skeveninger and I'm surprised to find that there's a sailing team that only consists of expats. So of course I'm going to join their team. I'm Paul Brown, this is West International. Countless surveys and studies have come to the same conclusion. Gender diversity in the Netherlands, and in particular in the area of women migrating into the top jobs in government, business and large companies, lag sorely behind other European countries. In our service item this week, we discover some women who have taken the initiative to address this situation. Now, our Vox Pops this week are all about sports. Cecilia heads off to the British school to surprise a teacher who has a special place in the heart of a five-year-old. But first, Nicola has been invited this week to sample some traditional Mexican cooking. What do Mexico and the Netherlands have in common? Not a lot, you might think. But on the other hand, who doesn't enjoy an icy cold margarita with some crispy tortilla chips and guacamole? I know I do. And we're all partial to a bit of Mexican music and culture. Well, my guest today, Alberto Noll, is from Mexico, and he arrived in the Netherlands just four days ago. So he's really new to the area. So I'm dying to hear what his first impressions are. Alberto, what's on the menu today? Chiles en hogada. What's that? It's a historical dish in Mexico. Uh -huh. It's with uh, poblano peppers. Poblano peppers. Poblano I've peppers. never had one, so I'm looking forward to that. So should we go into the kitchen and start cooking? OK. Alberto, I can see that you're a professional cook. Yes, I am. In Mexico, I have my own catering food service. Catering service. Yes. Catering. And I know you've only been here for four days, but what are, what, so far, what are your impressions of the Netherlands? I, well, it's very cold. The, the flowers are, are fantastic. <laughs> the, I love the cheese, the ananas cheese. I love the ananas cheese. And the, the people are very friendly. Okay, so you, basically you like everything so far. Yes. You're still in the honeymoon phase, Alberto. Yes. <laughs> the Netherlands? For, for love. For love. And do you have a Dutch girlfriend? No, a Mexican girl. Uh-huh. Uh, my, my girlfriend is studying a PhD in that. Oh, so she's a, she's a very clever girlfriend? Yes. <laughs> what surprises you, or what has surprised you about the Dutch people so far? Um, the people are very tall and the three kisses. Three kisses? Don't, don't you kiss three times in Mexico? No, only once. Only once. Okay, so that's a bit strange as well, huh? It's strange for me. But if it's a pretty girl, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yes. no, 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 no. <laughs> so I hear that you're a bit of a singer, that you love music. Is that is that true? Yes, I love the, the music. Uh -huh. And um, can you demonstrate your singing for me later when we're eating? Is that possible? Okay. Will you sing? After... After dinner? Uh, after dinner. Okay. Excellent. So what can you say in Dutch, Alberto? Um, we gaan aan tafel. We gaan aan tafel. We gaan tafel. Oh, excellent. It's eating time. De la sierra morena, cielito lindo, vienen bajando. Un par de ojitos negros, cielito lindo, de contrabando. Wow. I thought you were going to sing after dinner. Ah, oh, thank you. But that was fantastic. <laughs> and this looks amazing. It's beautiful Mexican beer. Cheers. Salud. Now, the moment of truth. Oh, well, it's smacking Oh, thank you, Al. Mmm. It was so good. Well, 
This is the week where we can cook like professionals. So you know what to do. Go to our website, www.westinternational.nl and have a go at this yourself. I highly recommend it. See you next week. Swimming, uh, cycling, and recently I took up ice skating. Yeah, I play, uh, play football. Jogging, running, and uh, badminton. Uh, I used to be an acrobat before, but uh, not since I was a teenager, no. Uh, normally I play golf. Being from Scotland, that's the, the national sport. In, in England, it is really important, especially football. It's, it's uh, basically something that every English person is into. It is the lifeblood of my country. Uh, sports, uh, certain sports, especially football, has made a lot of people famous in, from my uh, country, Nigeria. And um, a lot of games are popular in the Philippines, and most particularly American games, because of the American influence back there is so basketball, uh, sorry, basketball, bowling, soccer, things like that. So. In 2005, Susie Auger founded the Women's Business Initiative International, a business center for expat entrepreneurial women in The Hague. The aim is to promote the inclusion of women in the business world by identifying and removing the barriers that prevent their full participation. The Women's Business Initiative International was created to provide both the physical space and support necessary to create new business ventures. They organize workshops and classes, but also provide training on practical things like computer skills and keeping up with new technologies. Well, for internationals, in starting a business, a language barrier can be a problem, and as a result, finding the necessary information. The rules, regulations, and taxation can also be daunting. But by far the biggest challenge is the lack of professional network. We work hard to link these female entrepreneurs to the broader business community. Uh, women can also tend to be a little less sales focused. As an international group of entrepreneurial women, the WBII has 100 members, of which 70% are international and cover 20 different cultures. Well, there is definitely a trend among women starting businesses as they search to find new ways to combine their career and their family. Uh, women do tend to start their business in a steady, uh, thoughtful way, which makes their business um, more solid and less likely to go bankrupt. Uh, they also are very resourceful and they find surprising ways to stay focused on their business even with all of the demands on their time. We inspire women by bringing them together under one roof and in this professional environment they can collaborate and share information and their business can really thrive. Many women opt to start their business from home but along with the flexibility come challenges like isolation. Here, by having colleagues and working together, they can take their business further and their confidence grows as they see each other succeed. To inspire women in business, we recently introduced the Entrepreneurial Initiative Awards. And by recognizing these women, it's proving to be very inspiring to um, a broad group of women and we hope that it will really stimulate um, new entrepreneurial efforts. There are three awards, the Ambition Award, the Networker of the Year Award, and an award for social innovation that was won by the Ethiopian Debritu Lasto from Malaya Coffee. I set up an Ethiopian coffee brand and around this brand I organize all kinds of intercultural uh, activities to stimulate understanding between Ethiopia and uh, Netherlands and uh, between Africa and Europe. WBII is a very interesting uh, organization for me because they have a big network, a lot of expertise in that group and it's a woman uh, association. It's nice also sometimes to get together because we have a better understanding when uh, we don't have to explain everything, women understanding women. Don't be shy, go to find your partners, even if it is big university, even if it is big institution, they will work with you because they work with me. Yes, I think so. I think my, it's very easy to get out of the sport places, you know, where you want, but uh, my problem is that I don't have enough time. For, for international community, it's really great here, but also if you speak some Dutch, then in the local area, it's also possible. Yeah, I mean, I think there is a lot uh, offered. Uh, we have a, I will live in Vasana, and uh, there are many sports clubs. So if you want to have access, you can get it. Yes, yes, I found uh, I could actually take ice skating lessons, uh, which was really good. You have to find it. 
But yeah, once you find it, uh, I was surprised by how much is available and you can join it at any level. Particularly for me playing golf, then sports are very accessible. The courses are not private. Rosenstein's uh, free. Uh, not free, but free entry. Uh, we haven't tried other sports apart from cycling and swimming. They're very accessible. Suppose you're a five-year-old British girl living in the Netherlands who's very fond of your teacher. What can you do to thank her? Well, you could ask your mother to call West International so that we can send over our Cecilia with a nice surprise. That's exactly what happened. Are you Mrs. Clo? Yes. We have a surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to show you once the kids are all home and off to their moms. We'll have a little chat inside and I can show you our surprise. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, Mrs. Cloud, do you have a nice day? I heard you guys were at the farm. Yeah, it was very nice, very wet, but very <laughs> enjoyable. Thank you. And the kids love it? They did. They had a really good time. And how many students do you have in your class? I have 21. And how old are they? Between five and six. Oh, okay. So, how long have you been here at the British School? I'm, I've been here six months. Oh, so you're fairly new. Yes. Okay. And what do you teach these five, six years old? Oh uh, well, I teach them all the subjects except for Dutch. <laughs> okay. Which um, obviously is not my speciality. And where do you come from? Well, originally I am British, but I grew up in Zambia. So did you come directly from Zambia? No, I was living uh, uh, most recently in Paris. I've been teaching at a bilingual school in Paris, but I've been teaching mostly in Africa. And so, how, how have you found the Netherlands? Oh no, I'm enjoying it a lot. And the school, do you like? Oh, well, the school is great. It's a little bit unfamiliar because I've not been in the British system very much, but right. the students are really, uh, the, the students are really great. I have very supportive families that I work with, and um, they're hugely international, which is something that's uh, always a positive. So are you ready for the surprise? Well, this is the YMCA Gospel Choir. And I do and love gospel music. <laughs> and someone did know that you did. And they gave you two tickets, <laughs> as well as this DVD to take home with you, so that you can watch it again and again, if you love Thank it you so, so much. much. And do you know who might have surprised you with this? Anybody that you particularly helped, a family or a child in your class? Well, there are, a lot, there are lots of children that yeah. <laughs> I feel that I've helped. <laughs> Um, and I have to say that I, I feel that I connected with lots of the parents. It's really hard for me. They're, they're, they're a really, really lovely group of parents. So she didn't want to make any guesses as to which parents and family and kids that, uh, that surprised her today. So can the person please stand up and come forward? Thank you so much, Mary. That is so right. kind of you. We are so honoured to have you as a teacher, oh, really. Thank you. That is yeah, so thanks. kind of you. And it's Katie's idea. Oh, that is so kind of you. It's, I, I feel quite embarrassed because I, they invited me to a film last week and I slept <laughs> slept through the whole film. I was so exhausted, <laughs> which is so rude. Um, I hope but, you won't sleep through this. No, I, I promise you I won't sleep through this. Thank you so, so much. And Katie, thank you. I hear it was your idea. So, Katie. Why did you want to surprise your Mrs. Chloe today? Because um, she's the best teacher in the world. Oh, they're so cute. And um, did, how did you know that she likes gospel music? Did you already know that? Yeah? Is she singing in class? Yeah? Is she good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you want to surprise your teacher or someone else who's helped you out or with your children, let us know at www.westinternational.nl and we'll see you next week. Well-known uh, Dutch sportsman, uh, I knew Frank Rijkaard, the footballer, and I think Marco van Basten. Uh, Louis van Gaal is uh, the coach of AZ. He's probably the most famous one I know. Sorry, I can't think of anyone. This is really bad. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Gulit, Gulit, I guess the pronunciation, and then Van Basten, so the famous Dutch pl uh, football players. Ah, <gasps> uh, Goose Hiddings. <laughs> the older ones, some of the older footballers, Ruud Hillet and Van Basten, people like that. Today, I'm afraid not. Couldn't remember their names, but I, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of excellent Dutch sportsmen or women around. There's a famous Dutch song by the singer Piet Verman called Sailing Home. Now I kind of got that tune rolling around in my head because I'm on my way to a boat trip with an expat sailing team 
on this typical Dutch spring day. Now it's supposed to be a race but I have a feeling that no one's really interested in being the winner. It's all about the experience of sailing along on the beautiful Dutch waters. Today's race was part of the um, Aquatic Open Days event that we're organizing on April 4 and 5 in The Hague. And um, we're organizing this to promote the sailing possibilities in The Hague and Scheveningen. As we um, work with expats and we train expats to sail, we also wanted to invite them to sail during the race and therefore we've invited um, a few guests to sail with us uh, on Saturday morning. And one of these guests was the Australian Prasanth Shanmugan, better known as PJ, a fun guy to spend time with who later shares with us his interesting comparison of the Aussies and the Dutch. OK, so for you, is this fun, you know, or, or is there a little bit of a competitive edge to it? Uh, naturally, there's always a competitive edge to it, yeah. but, you know, it's not up to me. It's uh, really up to the teammates and the skipper as well. And uh, a bit of fun, but, uh, you know, I hope to win. I hope the expats both can win. Okay, let's do one of these hair fist things. Oof. There you go. <laughs> uh, that, that needs work, but we'll, we'll, we'll get <laughs> Is there a specific strategy for today then, as far as you're concerned, or, or as far as the team is concerned? Well, in sailing, there's a saying that goes, captain's word is law. So my only responsibility and our responsibility is just to listen to um, Skipper Oliver and make sure whatever he says gets done. I've been sailing most of my life, uh, pretty much about 23 years. Uh, in the past five years alone, I've knocked up over 12,000 miles at sea. Wow. So, uh, yeah, quite a bit, yeah. So we're in good hands, eh? Yeah, you're very safe with me. Well, what's your story as to how you from Australia are here in the Netherlands? Well, I'm undergoing the ultimate Australian rite of passage, which is the working holiday to Europe. Right. And so I think in the Netherlands they call it a work travel holiday. Okay. So I came to Europe about two years ago with a Dutch working holiday visa and a UK working holiday visa. Right. And I got a Dutch one out because I wanted to be um, different from the other Aussies and get uh, live and work in continental Europe. Right. And I chose the Netherlands because because it's uh, different from an Anglo society like the UK. Yeah. Um, in the UK, compared to Australia, we have the same Queen, same language, and we drive on the same side of the road. Okay. Come to the Netherlands, different Queen, different language, and we have bicycles instead of cars. So it's more of a challenge. It's then, more right? of a challenge, and it's a personal challenge that I wanted to give myself. On the subject of challenges, it's time to prepare ourselves for a race on the North Sea. For a group of totally novice sailors, I was impressed with how quickly everyone picked things up. So, time to kick off. But I, th I think as an Australian living in Europe, and especially in the Netherlands, you'll get along well because there's three distinct characteristics that makes uh, Australians and Dutchies quite alike. First is the egalitarianism. Dutch are an individualistic but an egalitarian society. I think they call it the Paul Dahmer Dahl, okay. the flat working culture. The second thing is directness. Aussies can be direct as well as can the Dutch. You have to be able to give it as well as take it. And I think the third thing is the concept of a fair go, giving everyone a chance, but also the concept of you know, your, my freedom ends where your freedom begins. Right. A sense of mutual respect. So, back at sea, things were starting to get pretty rough. Our boat was getting thrown around quite a bit, and my friend PJ just couldn't keep his breakfast down any longer. To be honest, I was just about hanging in there myself. With four boats ahead of us, we have no choice but to grit our teeth and keep on going. The race has been cut a little bit short. It started off late, and uh, so we're turning around and we're heading back a little bit earlier than expected. Although it was an exhilarating experience, I must admit a few of us on the boat didn't mind going back to the mainland. Well, that was uh, more challenging than I realized it would be. Uh, so I'm going to go and get my land legs back and in the meantime, why don't you check out this week's cultural agenda and when we come back, we'll see how we did in the race. These two comedic operas were both created around 1856 by different composers. The theme of the strong woman surrounded by weak men is a popular theme in opera and both of these pieces are about how women find men in their own different ways. The performances will also have subtitles in Dutch in case your French is a little rusty. The Dolphin Bowling Alley will be holding its annual bowling tournament on the 24th and 25th of April. This is the first time this event will be carried out over two days due to last year's roaring success. 
Only a limited number of teams from international organizations will be accepted, so hurry to get your place. Although it has never been done before now, the Princess Beatrix Foundation will be hosting a free market for children on the Malifeld this year for Queen's Day. Supported by the Municipality of The Hague and the children's TV channel Nickelodeon, this market is aimed to raise awareness for people with muscle diseases and movement problems. So, get on down there to support a good cause and maybe pick up a bargain. The Art of Swimming is a thoughtful and inventively staged production inspired by the life and times of Mercedes Gleitzer, who swam the English Channel in 1927. Small objects are used on stage to recreate epic scenes from her life, supported by the language, sounds and actions she uses. It's a wonderfully honest and human performance piece. To find out more, visit our website, www.westinternational.nl. Actually, we had to cancel the race by the end because it was taking too long to finish it. But I think the expat team did really well. <laughs> they all did very well. Very impressed. Everybody joining in, everybody really excited, really loving it. A couple of people not feeling so great out there. A little bit of weak stomach uh, syndrome going on. But uh, no, like I said, got everybody involved in all the manoeuvres and they're loving it really in the prime. What better way to round off a morning on the open seas than with a glass of champagne and a typically Dutch snack? Here's to a job well done. Thanks very much, Ollie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salute. Today was fun. You know, being on a sailboat all afternoon was different and certainly challenging, but at the same time rewarding. And it proves to me that as an expat in a foreign country, there are plenty of ways to discover activities with other people who enjoy your way of life. Now don't forget you can check out our website to find out about all kinds of things that are going on in The Hague and surrounding regions. Now next week we'll be covering the unique Dutch school system and we have an unusual surprise for a Romanian student so don't forget to tune in for that. However for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week on West International. You are what you watch. Cheers.